Section twenty eight of More English Fairy Tales The King of England and His Three Sons. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Ruhi Huck. More English Fairy Tales by Joseph Jacobs. The King of England and His Three Sons once upon a time there was an old king who had three sons and the old king fell very sick one time and there was nothing at all could make him well but some golden apples from a far country so the three brothers went on horseback to look for some of these apples they set off together and when they came to crossroads they halted and refreshed themselves a bit and then they agreed to meet on a certain time and not one was to go home before the other so valentine took the right and oliver went straight on and poor jack took the left to make my long story short i shall follow poor jack and let the other two take their chance for i don't think there was much good in them off poor jack rides over hills dales valleys and mountains through woolly woods and sheep walks where the old chap never sounded his hollow bugle horn farther than i can tell you to-night or ever intend to tell you at last he came to an old house near a great forest and there was an old man sitting out by the door and his look was enough to frighten you or any one else and the old man said to him good morning my king's son good morning to you old gentleman was the young prince's answer frightened out of his wits though he was he didn't like to give in the old gentleman told him to dismount and go in to have some refreshment and to put his horse in the stable such as it was jack soon felt much better after having something to eat and began to ask the old gentleman how he knew he was a king's son oh dear said the old man i knew that you were a king's son and i know what is your business better than what you do yourself so you will have to stay here to-night and when you are in bed you mustn't be frightened whatever you may hear there will come all manner of frogs and snakes and some will try to get into your eyes and your mouth but mind don't stir the least bit or you will turn into one of those things yourself poor jack didn't know what to make of this but however he ventured to go to bed just as he thought to have a bit of sleep round and over and under him they came but he never stirred an inch all night well my young son how are you this morning oh i am very well thank you but i didn't have much rest well never mind that you have got on very well so far but you have a great deal to go through before you can have the golden apples to go to your father you'd better come and have some breakfast before you start on your way to my other brother's house you will have to leave your own horse here with me until you come back again and tell me everything about how you get on after that out came a fresh horse for the young prince and the old man gave him a ball of yarn and he flung it between the horse's two ears off he went as fast as the wind which the wind behind could not catch the wind before until he came to the second oldest brother's house when he rode up to the door he had the same salute as from the first old man but this one was even uglier than the first one he had long grey hair and his teeth were curling out of his mouth and his finger and toe-nails had not been cut for many thousand years he put the horse into a much better stable and called jack in and gave him plenty to eat and drink and they had a bit of a chat before they went to bed well my young son said the old man i suppose you are one of the king's children come to look for the golden apples to bring him back to health yes i am the youngest of the three brothers and i should like to get them to go back with well don't mind my young son before you go to bed to-night i will send to my eldest brother and will tell him what you want and he won't have much trouble in sending you on to the place where you must get the apples but mind not to stir to-night no matter how you get bitten and stung or else you will work great mischief to yourself the young man went to bed and bore all as he did the first night 
and got up the next morning well and hearty after a good breakfast out comes a fresh horse and a ball of yarn to throw between his ears the old man told him to jump up quick and said that he had made it all right with his eldest brother not to delay for anything whatever for said he you have a good deal to go through within a very short and quick time he flung the ball and off he goes as quick as lightning and comes to the eldest brother's house the old man receives him very kindly and told him he longed wished to see him and that he would go through his work like a man and come back safe and sound to-night said he i will give you rest there shall nothing come to disturb you so that you may not feel sleepy for to-morrow and you must mind to get up middling early for you've got to go and come all in the same day there will be no place for you to rest within thousands of miles of that place and if there was you would stand in great danger never to come from there in your own form now my young prince mind what i tell you to-morrow when you come in sight of a very large castle which will be surrounded with black water the first thing you will do you will tie your horse to a tree and you will see three beautiful swans in sight and you will say swan swan carry me over in the name of the griffin of the greenwood and the swans will swim you over to the earth there will be three great entrances the first guarded by four great giants with drawn swords in their hands the second by lions the other by fiery serpents and dragons you will have to be there exactly at one o'clock and mind and leave there precisely at two and not a moment later when the swans carry you over to the castle you will pass all these things all fast asleep but you must not notice any of them when you go in you will turn up to the right you will see some grand rooms then you will go downstairs through the cooking kitchen and through a door on your left you go into a garden where you will find the apples you want for your father to get well after you fill your wallet you make all speed you possibly can call out for the swans to carry you over the same as before after you get on your horse should you hear anything shouting or making any noise after you be sure not to look back as they will follow you for thousands of miles but when the time is up and you get near my place it will be all over well now my young man i have told you all you have to do to-morrow and mind whatever you do don't look about you when you see all those frightful things asleep keep a good heart and make haste from there and come back to me with all the speed you can i should like to know how my true brothers were when you left them and what they said to you about me well to tell the truth before i left london my father was sick and said i was to come here to look for the golden apples for they were the only things that would do him good and when i came to your youngest brother he told me many things i had to do before i came here and i thought once your youngest brother put me in the wrong bed when he put all those snakes to bite me all night long until your second brother told me so it was to be and said it's the same here but said you had none in your beds well let's go to bed you need not fear there are no snakes here the young man went to bed and had a good night's rest and got up the next morning as fresh as newly caught trout breakfast being over out comes the other horse and while saddling and fettling the old man began to laugh and told the young gentleman that if he saw a pretty young lady not to stay with her too long because she might waken and then he would have to stay with her or be turned into one of those unearthly monsters like those he would have to pass by going into the castle ha 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 you make me laugh so that i can scarcely buckle the saddle straps i think i shall make it all right my uncle if i see a young lady there you may depend well my boy i shall see how you get on so he mounts his arab steed and off he goes like a shot of a gun at last he comes in sight of the castle he ties his horse safe to a tree and pulls out his watch it was then a quarter to one when he called out swan swan carry me over for the name of the old griffin of the greenwood no sooner said than done 
a swan under each side and one in front took him over in a crack he got on his legs and walked quietly by all those giants lions fiery serpents and all manner of other frightful things too numerous to mention while they were fast asleep and that only for the space of one hour when into the castle he goes neck or nothing turning to the right upstairs he runs and enters into a very grand bedroom and sees a beautiful princess lying full stretch on a gold bedstead fast asleep he gazed on her beautiful form with admiration and he takes her garter off and buckles it on his own leg and he buckles his on hers he also takes a gold watch and pocket handkerchief and exchanges his for hers after that he ventures to give her a kiss when she very nearly opened her eyes seeing the time short off he runs downstairs and passing through the kitchen to go into the garden for the apples he could see the cook all fours on her back on the middle of the floor with a knife in one hand and the fork in the other he found the apples and filled the wallet and on passing through the kitchen the cook near wakened but he was obliged to make all the speed he possibly could as the time was nearly up he called out for the swans and they managed to take him over but they found that he was a little heavier than before no sooner had he mounted his horse he could hear a tremendous noise the enchantment was broke and they tried to follow him but all to no purpose he was not long before he came to the oldest brother's house and glad enough he was to see it for the sight and the noise of all those things that were after him nearly frightened him to death welcome my boy i am proud to see you dismount and put the horse in the stable and come in and have some refreshments i know you are hungry after all you have gone through in that castle and tell me all you did and all you saw there other king's sons went by here to go to that castle but they never came back alive and you are the only one that ever broke the spell and now you must come with me with a sword in your hand and must cut my head off and must throw it in the well the young prince dismounts and puts his horse in the stable and they go in to have some refreshments for i can assure you he wanted some and after telling everything that passed which the old gentleman was very pleased to hear they both went for a walk together the young prince looking around and seeing the place looking dreadful as did the old man he could scarcely walk from his toenails curling up like ram's horns that had not been cut for many hundred years and big long hair they came to a well and the old man gives the prince a sword and tells him to cut his head off and throw it in that well the young man has to do it against his wish but has to do it no sooner has he flung the head in the well than up springs one of the finest young gentlemen you would wish to see and instead of the old house and the frightful looking place it was changed into a beautiful hall and grounds and they went back and enjoyed themselves well and had a good laugh about the castle the young prince leaves this young gentleman in all his glory and he tells the young prince before leaving that he will see him again before long they have a jolly shake hands and off he goes to the next oldest brother and to make my long story short he has to serve the other two brothers the same as the first now the youngest brother began to ask him how things went on did you see my two brothers yes how did they look oh they looked very well i liked them much they told me many things what to do well did you go to the castle yes my uncle and will you tell me what you see in there did you see the young lady yes i saw her and plenty of other frightful things did you hear any snake biting you in my oldest brother's bed no there were none there i slept well you won't have to sleep in the same bed tonight you will have to cut my head off in the morning the young prince had a good night's rest and changed all the appearance of the place by cutting his friend's head off before he started in the morning a jolly shake hands and the uncle tells him it's very probable he shall see him again soon when he is not aware of it this one's mansion was very pretty and the country around it beautiful 
after his head was cut off off jack goes over hills dales valleys and mountains and very near losing his apples again at last he arrives at the crossroads where he has to meet his brothers on the very day appointed coming up to the place he sees no tracks of horses and being very tired he lays himself down to sleep by tying the horse to his leg and putting the apples under his bed presently up come the other brothers the same time to the minute and found him fast asleep and they would not waken him but said one to another let us see what sort of apples he has got under his head so they took and tasted them and found they were different to theirs they took and changed his apples for theirs and off to london as fast as they could and left the poor fellow sleeping after a while he awoke and seeing the tracks of other horses he mounted and off with him not thinking anything about the apples being changed he still had a long way to go and by the time he got near london he could hear all the bells in the town ringing but did not know what was the matter till he rode up to the palace when he came to know that his father was recovered by his brother's apples when he got there his two brothers were off to some sports for a while and the king was glad to see his youngest son and very anxious to taste his apples but when he found out that they were not good and thought they were more for poisoning him he sent immediately for the headsman to behead his youngest son who was taken away there and then in a carriage but instead of the headsman taking his head off he took him to a forest not far from the town because he had pity on him and there left him to take his chance when presently up comes a big hairy bear limping upon three legs the prince poor fellow climbed up a tree frightened of him but the bear told him to come down that it was no use of him to stop there with hard persuasion poor jack comes down and the bear speaks to him and bids him come here to me i will not do you any harm it's better for you to come with me and have some refreshments i know that you are hungry all this time the poor young prince says no i am not hungry but i was very frightened when i saw you coming to me first and i had no place to run away from you the bear said i was also afraid of you when i saw that gentleman setting you down from the carriage i thought you would have guns with you and that you would not mind killing me if you saw me but when i saw the gentleman going away with the carriage and leaving you behind by yourself i made bold to come to you to see who you were and now i know who you are very well are you not the king's youngest son i have seen you and your brothers and lots of other gentlemen in this wood many times now before we go from here i must tell you that i am in disguise and i shall take you where we are stopping the young prince tells him everything from first to last how he started in search of the apples and about the three old men and about the castle and how he was served at last by his father after he came home and instead of the headsman taking his head off he was kind enough to leave him his life and here i am now under your protection the bear tells him come on my brother there shall no harm come to you as long as you are with me so he takes him up to the tents and when they see him coming the girls begin to laugh and say here is our jubal coming with a young gentleman when he advanced nearer the tents they all knew that he was the young prince that had passed by that way many times before and when jubal went to change himself he called most of them together into one tent and told them all about him and to be kind to him and so they were for there was nothing that he desired but what he had the same as if he was in the palace with his father and mother jubal after he pulled off his hairy coat was one of the finest young men amongst them and he was the young prince's closest companion the young prince was always very sociable and merry only when he thought of the gold watch he had from the young princess in the castle and which he had lost he knew not where he passed off many days in the forest but one day he and poor jubal were strolling through the trees when they came to the very spot where they first met and accidentally looking up he could see his watch hanging in the tree which he had to climb when he first saw poor jubal coming to him in the form of a bear and he cries out jubal jubal i can see my watch up in that tree 
well i am sure how lucky exclaimed poor jubal shall i go and get it down no i'd rather go myself said the young prince now whilst all this was going on the young princess in that castle seeing that one of the king of england's sons had been there by the changing of the watch and other things got herself ready with a large army and sailed off for england she left her army a little out of the town and she went with her guards straight up to the palace to see the king and also demanded to see his sons they had long conversations together about different things at last she demands one of the sons to come before her and the oldest comes when she asks him have you ever been at the castle of melvales and he answers yes she throws down a pocket handkerchief and bids him to walk over it without stumbling he goes to walk over it and no sooner did he put his foot on it than he fell down and broke his leg he was taken off immediately and made a prisoner of by her own guards the other was called upon and was asked the same questions and i had to go through the same performance and he also was made a prisoner of now she says have you not another son when the king began so to shiver and shake and knock his two knees together that he could scarcely stand upon his legs and did not know what to say to her he was so much frightened at last a thought came to him to send for his headsman and inquire of him particularly did he behead his son or was he alive he is saved o king then bring him here immediately or i shall be done for two of the fastest horses they had were put in the carriage to go and look for the poor prince and when they got to the very spot where they had left him it was the time when the prince was up the tree getting his watch down and poor jubal standing a distance off they cried out to him had he seen another young man in this wood jubal seeing such a nice carriage thought something and did not like to say no and said yes and pointed up to the tree and they told him to come down immediately as there was a young lady in search of him ha 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 jubal did you ever hear such a thing in all your life my brother do you call him your brother well he has been better to me than my brothers well for his kindness he shall accompany you to the palace and see how things turn out after they go to the palace the prince has a good wash and appears before the princess when she asks him had he ever been at the castle of melvales with a smile upon his face he gives a graceful bow and says my lady walk over that handkerchief without stumbling he walks over it many times and dances upon it and nothing happened to him she said with a proud and smiling air that is the young man and out come the objects exchanged by both of them presently she orders a very large box to be brought in and to be opened and out come some of the most costly uniforms that were ever worn on an emperor's back and when he dressed himself up the king could scarcely look upon him from the dazzling of the gold and diamonds on his coat he orders his two brothers to be in confinement for a period of time and before the princess asks him to go with her to her own country she pays a visit to the bear's camp and she makes some very handsome presents for their kindness to the young prince and she gives jubal an invitation to go with them which he accepts wishes them a hearty farewell for a while promising to see them all again in some little time they go back to the king and bid farewell and tell him not to be so hasty another time to order people to be beheaded before having a proper cause for it off they go with all their army with them but while the soldiers were striking their tents the prince bethought himself of his welsh harp and had it sent for immediately to take with him in a beautiful wooden case they called to see each of those three brothers whom the prince had to stay with when he was on his way to the castle of melvales and i can assure you when they all got together they had a merry time of it and there we will leave them end of the king of england and his three sons.